Good morning, Celebration Center for Spiritual Living. It is such a glorious, beautiful, good God morning this morning, and I am so grateful to be here with all of you. Uh, as if you are watching online and you don't know of Celebration Center, we are physically located in Falls Church, Virginia, which is part of the D.C. metro area, but of course, uh, we are um, still on zoom. <laughs> Sorry, I was switching over to gallery view for face or for to speaker view for Facebook folks. Uh, we are still on zoom and we are in the process. We are beginning the beginning of getting ready to be back in person together, which is very exciting. Um, Ivor and I have had several meetings. Lynn and I have been talking about it. I've been talking about it with other ministers. We've been uh, brainstorming and really figuring out what's going to be best for our community as we come back together in person because we have committed um, to continue to have our services live streamed in some way so that if you can't join us on a Sunday morning for whatever reason, uh, whether that's you just aren't able to get out here or because you live too far away or maybe you're on vacation but you still want some some Sunday service stuff going on uh, that you will be able to join us via live stream or in person once we are back together in person so we're really excited about that we're doing fundraisers and things that you're going to hear about later to raise the money for the technology that we need um, thank god for Ivor you know it is really nice to have <laughs> It is really nice to have an engineer who knows tech and knows so much about so much. Um, so physically located in the DC metro area and we'll be back together and look forward to seeing anybody who may be joining us from around there or you can still live stream with us for everything. Um, in addition, if you want to know anything about our upcoming events, you can go to celebrationcenter.org and if you're currently watching us on Facebook, if you go to celebrationcenter.org and click on enter Zoom events, you're welcome to join us here on Zoom as well. And so without further ado, we always like to start every service with our vision statement so that we are all headed in the same place together. Um, so if you will stay muted and say aloud with me our vision, we are celebrating spirit within and knowing the oneness of humanity. And yes, we are truly doing that here at Celebration. Uh, <laughs> I have, as I have gotten to know y'all more, you know, I've been here almost six months, if y'all can believe that already. Um, I have really discovered that y'all are, or we are aptly named because y'all love a good celebration and it, that just makes me really happy. So uh, we truly are celebrating the spirit within. And now I would like to invite our uh, music director, Lynn Hollyfield, to open us in some music. Okay, um, actually, Ivor, um... We've uh, all angles and I prepared a song for this service. Uh, it's Karen Drucker's Holy, Holy, Holy. We are 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 holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are holy, holy, holy. We are. Spirit divine, holy, come to me, holy, feeling love, healing me, holy, open my heart, allow me to see. to me, oh. 
Thank you so much, All Angles. That was beautiful. And what a peaceful and delightful way to start out our day with a reminder that we are truly holy. And uh, thank you so much, Lynn. Your video editing skills are just off the charts. So uh, it's, really, it's really wonderful all that you have been able to do during this time. And now I would like to invite our uh, prayer practitioner, Rich Kershevitz, to uh, lead us in some prayer and a reading. Uh, I'd like to add to that, wow, that was, that was really impressive uh, video. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Rich Kershevitz, and I'm a licensed practitioner here at uh, CCSL. Practitioners are trained and taught to pray by seeing and knowing the truth in any situation. We are available for prayer and uh, we used to have green prayer cards that we submitted. Later on in the service, you will see on our main site where you can submit a prayer request uh, either online or uh, via email at prayer at uh, celebrationcenter.org. The, the ministry of prayer meets uh, on Monday and then all the practitioners pray on those requests throughout the week. So if you have something that you want to change or improve or just to maintain in your life, or uh, somebody close to you, or uh, somebody who is in need, please fill out a, a prayer request. Today's reading is from Ernest Holmes, from uh, 365 Signs of Mind, for May 23rd, actually. Realizing that the spirit within me is God, the living spirit almighty, and being fully conscious of this divine presence as the sustaining principle of my life, I open up my thought to its influx. I open my consciousness to its outpouring. I let that mind be in me that was also in Christ Jesus. That is the mind of truth, the mind of God, carrying with it all the power of the infinite. I know and understand that good alone is real. All there is, is mine now. All there ever was or ever can be is mine now. Of this divine bounty I partake. The same good I realize belongs to everyone else. 
I do not desire a good for myself that is greater than the good I desire for all people. Since all are some part of the divine, good belongs alike to all. I proclaim this good to be manifest among all people. Let's take a nice deep breath. Let it out. Again, just let all the cares, worries, concerns out and just go to the center within and be at peace. And as we are breathing in unison, we're breathing in unison with the entire universe. For God is all there is. The living spirit almighty in all, over all, around all, through all. There is only one mind, power, one presence, and one life. God is the entire universe, the creator and the creation, all life and everything there is. And I am that I am. I am a divine incarnation. I am one with God. My life is the life of God. I am perfect, whole, and complete. And just as I am perfect, whole, and complete, each and everyone is perfect, whole, complete, eternal, and immortal. I declare that each and everyone takes the time to daily go within, into the silence, in the secret place of the Most High, to raise their consciousness through unity with the divinity within. I know that we experience peace, love, joy, harmony, abundance, and let our light shine from within. I declare that we pray for our good and the good for others by speaking our word with faith, trust, belief, expectancy, acceptance, and gratitude. I know the invisible becomes visible through our word, which is divine. I know that each and every one is the light of the world and a blessing to each and every one they come in contact with. I'm so very grateful for the truth that sets us free as we practice prayer and meditation. I'm so very grateful for our ability to easily and effortlessly raise our consciousness and rise above our circumstances. And I release my word unto the law where it's already known in the mind of God. And this is assured of fulfillment. This is the word of God and will not return unto me void. I do give thanks that this is so. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you so much, Rich. And now I'd like to invite Lynn for some music. Okay, um, I'm going to start with um, that wonderful Jesse Colin Young song, Get Together. And I put, I put the words in the chat box, so I hope you join me. Uh, hang on just one moment. Technical. Love is but a song to sing Fierce way we die You can make the mountains ring Make the angels cry Though the bird is on the wing you may not know why. Come on, people now. Smile on your brother. Everybody get together. Try to love one another right now.
some may come and some may go we will surely pass when the one that's left us here reminds us all we'll last we are brightly shining sunlight it's time for us to act come on people now smile on your sister everybody get together try to love one another right now we can hear the song we sing we all understand We hold the key to love and fear All in our loving hands Just one key unlocks them both It's there at our command Come on, people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now Come on, people now Smile on your brother Everybody get together Try to love one another right now Right now Right now Thank you so much, Lynn. I love that song. <laughs> and I saw a lot of people jamming along with us or with you, Lynn, so thank you. So this month we are talking about uh, holy, holy uprising, right? Holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y, the whole of us and holy, H-O-L-Y, so that which is sacred, which is the whole of us, uprising, changing who we are, the very core of who we are, that holiness rushing through our entire beingness, and in doing so, changes not only who we are, but changes us collectively. And today, the, the title of my talk and the global theme that a lot of ministers across the country and across the world are talking about this morning is Say Their Names. And uh, Say Their Names is actually a movement. It is a movement that was started as a result of the amount of injustice that is, um, that is, uh, happens in the face of racial inequality. So there is a website called saytheirnames.io, and I will put that in the chat. Um, and it's to raise awareness for the injustice and often for forgotten names of racial inequality. And this is specifically people who are murdered at the hands of police, specifically uh, African-American individuals who are murdered at the hands of the police. And so when I started looking at this talk title, I had a lot of thoughts. <laughs> I had a lot of thoughts and I had a lot of questions um, because there is so much power in this movement and in the remembering of those people who have been forgotten. And I don't wanna make light of that by using that as my talk title. So I had several conversations with Reverend Raymond Anderson uh, about how to honor this title and how to also speak to the fact that we know the truth that there is no such thing as death. That even though we can uh, let go of these physical forms and those, then that sometimes happens through injustice or through uh, violence, who we are at our core, our soul does not die. Ernest Holmes, the statement of beliefs, we believe in the eternality, the continuity and the individuality of the 
uh, soul ever and ever and ever and ever expanding. That's what it is. Something like that, slightly paraphrased. And we honor what is happening. We honor what is happening in the world and we look, it is our job to look at what is mine to do in this situation. And we've been talking a lot about that. We talked about it last week. What is mine to do in these situations as we're looking out into the world at what is happening? And as I was flipping through this website, the Say Their Names website, and I was reading the stories of the individuals who are being honored there, what I realized is that it all comes from a place of fear. When, uh, when our police officers are able to murder somebody in cold blood, when they are running away or when they are already handcuffed and on the ground, or even if they're just talking or moving or existing or sleeping or walking down the street in a hoodie or whatever they may be doing, the thing that is behind that is extreme fear. And so I wanna look at fear and I wanna look at how it comes up for us. And I wanna look at um, how we can look at our fear because the very definition of fear is it's something that we don't want to address. It's something that we don't wanna look at. It's something that we're worried is gonna happen in the future. And um, when we are willing to face that fear, it's hard, but it moves us through that fear to a place where we can actually understand what is happening in our minds and our bodies, why we're reacting the way we are, and we can choose to react or respond differently in the future. And no, none of us here have murdered anybody in fear, but we have done things out of fear. We have shown up from fear in some way. Perhaps it's uh, by crossing the street when we see somebody who is behaving erratically or seems like they're not quite all there, or or perhaps it's not answering the phone or avoiding a family member that we don't want to talk to or just walking away from a friendship rather than having an uncomfortable conversation. We have all done things from a place of fear. And that's okay. You know, it happens. It's part of being human. We get afraid, but we get to look at that and we get to continue to do better and better and better. Sonia Renee Taylor in her book, The Body is Not an Apology, which is what I'm currently reading, one of the books I'm currently reading. She says, it is damn scary to probe the depths of the thoughts, ideas, and subconscious principles governing our daily lives. To be fear-facing is to learn the distinction between fear and danger. It is to look directly at the source of the fear and assess if we are truly in peril or if we are simply afraid of the unknown. To be fear facing is to learn the distinction between fear and danger. That blew my mind because we tend to assume that anything that we're afraid of is dangerous. And there was a time that that assumption was really helpful. Like back when we were being chased by saber toothed tigers, it's good if you're, you know, afraid to just run and figure out later if there was actually a tiger chasing you or not, right? Those split seconds of, oh, am I actually in danger? Am I just, you know, having a moment? could be the matter of life and death. But the reality is, is that we're not chased by tigers very often. It's something that another thing that I doubt any of us has experienced. And if you had, please tell me the story in the community Zoom time after because I want to hear it. But we get to stop when that fear wells up. We get to stop and we get to turn and face that fear. And we get to look at, am I actually in danger or am I um, just afraid of what is happening? Am I afraid of the unknown? Uh, David Carrera is a uh, free diver, and I have 
free diving is one of the most amazing things that I've ever seen. If you YouTube free diving videos, you can see these videos of these people diving down. It's basically diving without any gear. So no scuba gear, no way to breathe, and you dive down. And the world record right now for people diving without any gear or oxygen is 702 feet. 702 feet down with no gear, no way to breathe, no emergency solution. And what's really interesting is that's technically deeper than most scuba divers with gear can go. And so when somebody is diving down to those levels, they are truly alone. They, they put down a guide rope because you can't see at those depths, it's way too dark, so that they can follow the guide rope down and then follow the guide rope back up. But the scuba divers who could save them only join them the first uh, 90 meters down, which is the first 270 feet. And then they wait there at 270 feet while they continue to go another almost 500 feet down alone. But, that's mind blowing to me. I can't even, I can't even fathom that, right? Uh, David Carrera, who is one of these free divers, who is one of the best in the world. He says, the dive is a spiritual thing. I learn how to listen to my body. I must listen or I will die. In the water, I must learn the difference between fear and danger. And he goes on to talk about how he is afraid but that fear doesn't necessarily mean, mean that he is in danger because his body is capable of doing this. His body is capable of going to these depths without breathing. And so he gets to, he gets to move past the fear and trust his skills and his wisdom and his intuition and his knowledge and trust his body to be able to do what he knows it can do. And he gets to push past that, beer, that fear and tell himself, I am not in danger. This is simply a moment of unknown and I choose to step beyond that. And we can do that as well. We can do that as well. And so uh, I think one of the ways that it used to come up for me a lot, it doesn't so much anymore. And I think that's partially because I don't live in Houston, Texas anymore. But back when I lived in Texas, in Houston, there were homeless people that would, or people, I don't necessarily know that they all didn't have homes, but there were people that would stand on every single corner asking for money, right? They would hold up signs and ask for money. And the the thing that I used to do, and I think the thing that a lot of people do, is they, they don't want to make eye contact, right? Like you kind of like, you know, you look this way, they're over there, you look this way, and you, or you like really busy on your phone all of a sudden at the, at the red light, just at the red light, or, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're talking to somebody else, or you, you roll up your window, or you lock your car door, right? But why? Is that person actually dangerous or am I just afraid of what might happen? Am I just fearing the unknown or fearing that if I make eye contact, they might come over, they might need something or they might want something or it might interrupt my day. I'm late, I'm busy, I'm this, I'm that. And so to move past that, that uh, immediate automatic reaction of fear or of, um, of turning away, I started rolling down my window anytime we were headed to a restaurant, which was often because Reagan and I were always running around when I lived in Houston. Um, and I would ask them, hey, I'm going to thus and such restaurant. Do you want me to get you something? Will you be here in 15 minutes? I'm happy to like pick you up a meal and loop back around. And I would get them anything that they asked for. You know, McDonald's or Arby's, most people know what, what these restaurants serve, right? And I would bring their food back to them, whatever they wanted. Because not only were, um, were, was I able to just give them something that they needed, but I was able to give them something that they wanted instead of being like, oh, I have this half eaten burger here. Do you want your very own hot meal that is exactly what you want in this moment? What sounds good to you? 
how can I serve and support you? Because we are truly all equal here. And my fear, my discomfort does not outweigh your humanity. And so we get to do that and we get to do it over and over and over again. That doesn't come up for me very often anymore, that particular situation, but that doesn't mean that it doesn't come up for me. We want to avoid things that make us uncomfortable or that might put us out or that you know might change the trajectory of our very well planned out day. And we tend to look at those things in fear, but they are not dangerous. They're just the unknown. Brene Brown says, loving ourselves through the process of owning our story is the bravest thing we will ever do. And for the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about a lot of really hard topics because this idea of holy, holy uprising means that we get to look at the totality of everything that is going on, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and love it. And so even though we're talking about these challenging situations and we're looking at these times in our lives that maybe we did react in fear, or maybe we did assume that our fear meant something was dangerous, even though those two things don't necessarily go together, or perhaps we prejudge somebody or a situation or a group of people based on a single action, and yes, both things are true. We get to look at that and look at the times that we have done that so that moving forward, we make a different decision and we get to love the person that we were when we made that mistake. It's okay. We get to love that person. We get to love ourselves and be gentle with ourselves. We are all a work in progress. And, you know, a mistake, some people in some traditions call it sin, right? It's going against God, right? It's not actually what sin means. Sin is an archery term, and it means to miss the mark. So it's literally when your arrow doesn't go where you wanted it to go. And there's no judgment in that. It's, oh, my arrow didn't go where I wanted it to go. There's always an opportunity for another choice. And so when I say that we made a mistake, we were doing the best we could with the knowledge and the wisdom and the intuition and the abilities that we had in that moment. But that's okay. We might have missed the mark. We get to do something different another time. We get to try again or um, practice differently next time. It's okay. We don't have to judge ourselves. We don't have to make ourselves wrong. And we don't have to judge one another or make one another wrong when that happens. We can love ourselves through the process of owning every single moment of our story. Mr. Rogers says, anything that's human is mentionable. And anything that is mentionable can be more manageable. When we talk about our feelings, they become less overwhelming, less upsetting, and less scary. Another thing that I know about fear is that it really likes to hide in the shadows. We really like to not talk about the things that we're afraid of. We like to hope that they'll just go away, right? If I just ignore this, or if I just look away, or if I just, you know, pretend it's not happening, maybe it'll stop happening. But that is where that place of shame and guilt and making ourselves small in the hopes that something will go away, that is the place that these fears can fester and these fears can grow and all of a the sudden they're out of control and we can't recognize the difference between fear and danger. But when we're willing to bring it up to the surface, when we're willing to look at ourselves and say, hey, I'm feeling a lot of fear right now. What's up with that? What's going on? Where is the danger? Is there danger? And when we do that, we are able to breathe a little deeper and we're able to relax just a little bit. And all of a the sudden, these feelings that we were trying to stuff and suppress and hide and not talk about, they become more manageable. 
And we also realize when we start talking about these feelings with other people that everybody is having the same experience. Everybody has these moments of fear that are not based in anything. Everybody is having these moments of doubt and shame and guilt and they've made the mistakes and they're trying harder and everybody's trying to grow and shift and change and move. And so we don't have to stuff it down. We don't have to be ashamed, but instead we can bring it out to the surface because it becomes less overwhelming, less upsetting, and less scary. And so this movement to say their names, this is not out of alignment with knowing the truth that everybody is perfect, whole, and complete. This is looking these things that scare us in the face. This is being fear facing and seeing, yes, in these instances, the, the fact that a lot of Black people are terrified of the police, that is accurate because the police are dangerous to them because they are being killed by the police. But we get to look, those of us who are privileged with our skin color, we get to look at why don't I want to look at what is happening to this other group of people that I love so much. We celebrate the oneness of humanity, all of humanity. We get to look at, is my fear around looking at the Say Their Names movement, is that actually based in danger? And what is mine to do in this situation? How can I support those people who are being marginalized, who are being oppressed and who are being killed? How can I support them? How can I step up and shine my light on this situation in a way that I have never uh, been willing or brave enough to do before? Because now I am choosing to be fear facing. And I am choosing to take a stand and I'm choosing to say, I know that there is only God, God and nothing else. And therefore, I know that justice and equality and equity and everybody being safe to walk the streets is, is possible and is what oneness means. When I say I'm celebrating oneness, this is what I mean is that everybody is included everybody. Ernest Holmes says, we must come to believe in the invisible principle of Christ, the consciousness of immediate oneness between humanity and the spirit. And this is true for all of us. And as much as we want to exist that we or believe that we exist in this little vacuum of just creating our own reality, that is not accurate. We are co-creating this reality with one another. And so everything that we look out and we see that we are, that doesn't seem like oneness, all of that is our co-creation and all of it is ours to shift. Say Their Names is also a movement that is, it is for people who have passed away. And something that we um, do fairly well in this movement is honoring the people that have come before us and honoring the contributions of those who have come before us. And especially honoring those who tend not to be honored and who tend to be forgotten. Our history books don't necessarily always tell the whole story, but in our organization and our movement since the beginning, it has been very important to the leadership of this organization that all voices are heard and it is getting more important and we are getting better at it. And so one of the ways that we can honor the people who have come before us is by knowing the indigenous lands that we stand on. And so what I know is that this center is physically located on the lands of the Piscataway Kanoi tribe. And what was really interesting when I was doing some research, research about this tribe, the Piscataway tribe, is that they were actually up in Southern Maryland 
And when John Smith came and, um, and uh, the colonizers came, they actually escaped down into our area, into Northern Virginia. And that's how the tribes were, were started here in this area. And we have work to do to heal what has happened in the past and to heal that. No, we were not the ones to do that. No, we weren't the ones to chase people out of their lands. And we do get to honor and recognize that this land is here and that it is held sacred and that it is thriving in the way that it is because of the indigenous peoples that came before us. And this is true of our lives as well, that we are the result of multitudes of people coming together. Linda Hogan says, I am listening to a deeper way. Suddenly, all of my ancestors are behind me. Be still, they say, watch and listen. You are the result of the love of thousands. We are the result of the love of thousands of people coming together over and over and over again to spread this genealogy of love. And so today, I would like to close this by doing a libation ceremony. This is a ceremony that comes from uh, West Africa. And to begin it, I have a video of um, someone... Oh, I did not write her name down, I do apologize, but it will show it on the screen at the beginning of uh, the ceremony. And she is speaking, um, Ashara, Ashara Ekundeo. Um, she is at the beginning of a four-day conference. And so she's talking to them, you'll hear it about, this is the start of this four-day journey together, this is the start. And even though we're not at the start of a four-day conference, we are at the start of our reopening process. And so I invite you to listen to these words that she is saying from this idea of coming out of the global pandemic and moving into what our new world and our new normal is going to look like. Go ahead. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Are you all asleep? <laughs> It's so gloriously beautiful outside, but we are here today. We made a choice to be here today, and I just want to honor you for being able to stand here in this crossroad, and for those who are the keeper of the crossroads, who have done all of this work for us to convene here together. And I just want to invite us to plant ourselves. Some of you may be wondering what libation ceremony is. So before we begin that, let's just get comfortable in the place that we're touching something, whether that be your seat or the floor, the wall. Well, I guess you're not really standing on the wall, but at least the floor to take a breath with each other, with one another and together. And that as you take this next breath, you visualize yourself and the roots of your body going down through this carpet and through this concrete, through this wood, this dock, to the water that is beneath us and to the side of us, the water that we plant ourselves here and that we release all of the distractions or craziness of startup and whatnot, that we release it into the water today. And on our inhale, that we take in the beauty and the nourishment of the water. That we take it in so that we be able to be buoyant over these next four days, that we be able to be full and free and open to meet and be with presently all these different kinds of people and ideas, thoughts, projects, dreams, and whatnot. That we be fluid. That's the thing about water. It gets in all the crevices and cracks. It gets everywhere. It's, just, it's everywhere. And that we be able to be fluid in our acceptance 
and understanding of one another, this planet indeed made up of this element, that everything on this planet actually needs to engage this element to survive, that this body that we use to manifest expression is made of this element, and that just if you, as you've taken in the water and the roots of your body, of your creative body, You've done this before, that we all breathe through this element, we're fed and nurtured in this element in the wombs of our mothers. This is not new. So I invite you to be with the idea and the reality that what we have in common is the ability to transmit through this element. So we are going to do a libation ceremony this morning. And this is like, uh, like I said, and I believe she mentioned, and if not, she mentions it later in the video, this is a West African ceremony. And so it also came across the water as we were talking about the water. And libation literally means that you are pouring a liquid from one vessel into another vessel. So as you see here, I have water. You can do it with ghee, you can do it with honey, you can do it with liquor. Um, and I am going to be pulling, pouring it into another bowl and I'm going to invite Ivor to come adjust my video camera just a little bit. And this is a participatory ceremony. And so it's gonna be a little jumpy for just a moment. <laughs> yes, thank you, Ivor, that's perfect. So uh, this is a participatory ceremony and every, we are going to pour the water for several different groups of people. And every time that I do that, I'm going to speak them into the room. And you can respond with either a she, which is an African way of saying, and so it is. You can say, and so it is. Or you can say, a ho, which is the indigenous way of saying, and so it is. And so first... We pour the water for those who have come before us, for our mothers, our fathers, our parents, our loved ones, our mentors, for those who are remembered and those who are forgotten, for those who have not been honored for the contributions their lives made to our world and those who have been honored, for those who have walked this path before us, made space for us, began the journey for us and showed us the way. Those who wiped our tears, took care of us, told us we could do it, supported us, gave us our first breaks. We pour the water for them. Ashe. And now we pour the water for us. We are here in this time, in this body. We are rooted in the water, grounded in the truth of our oneness. We are doing the work right now, right here, and we are honoring our own paths. We show up as angels for one another. We are one another's answered prayer. We are open at the top and always seeking to discover what is ours to do. And we honor those who are in our lives and have made space for us to be here in this moment with this group in this community. Ashe, aho, and so it is. We pour water for those who are coming, for the babies, for the dreams, for the ideas, for the plans, and for the risks. We hold these ideas in one another, knowing that they are coming. We stand with one another in curiosity of what is to come and hold the vision of what is possible. We consider the work that is coming and know that it is good. Ashe, aho, and so it is. And final, finally, we have a little bit left. And this little bit stays in the jar because we know someone may come to visit. And it is good hospitality to always be able to offer even a drink of water 
for those who come to visit, to be open and welcoming, radically inclusive in, in our ability to say yes and to embrace all. So we leave this little bit out for the next space to welcome and offer a glass of water. And now in this space of cycles and circles, and in this time of stepping out of fear and into love, I invite you to close your eyes and ask yourself the following questions. Is what I am doing meaningful? Is what I am doing mindful? What is my ancestral legacy? Will those who come after me remember my name and call it with reverence because I do this work? And what is mine to do right now? And with those questions on our mind, I invite us to close our eyes and go to prayer. feeling ourselves rooted down into the earth, into that place where the, where the water lives, knowing that we are rooted and grounded in the same element, in the same way of being, that we are all one, and that this oneness extends out into everything, everywhere, every, every expression, every action, every decision, every person. And out beyond all of that to every planet, every galaxy, every star, every system, every universe. And beyond even that to out what is, what is outside of our fathoming, what is outside of our imagining. There is only love. There is only peace. There is only truth. This one thing that is going on, this infinite expressing, expression that is expressing itself as us this I am that I am presence, that is the I am that lives in each of us, as each of us. Knowing that we are the individualized expression of that I am presence. The I am that I am is us. And our lives are the lives of the spirits, the ground upon which we walk is sacred because it is, we are the divine and it is the divine. And so I know and affirm in this moment is that we let go of our fear, that we become fear facing and that we are able and willing to bring up those things that we have been suppressing and look at them and face them. And in doing so, in bringing our light to the fear, we bring the light to those who are truly living in a place of danger. We are willing and able to do what is ours to do to shift the planet and create a world that works for every single individual, for all life, the plants and the animals, the water and the land and the air as the people. And I am so grateful for this beloved community that is doing this work together. I am so grateful for those who have come before us and for those who are coming after us. I am so grateful for this work. And I simply release my word. I let it go. I let it be. I know it is done as I have spoken and we say together. And so it is. And so now for TELUS, I invite you to tell us who has come before that you are honoring this morning. And if you have not participated in TELUS before, you are welcome to raise your hand and let us know who are you honoring this morning who has come before. Melinda. And you will need to unmute Melinda. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. The, <coughs> um, the persons that I 
am honoring and remembering and have gratitude for my parents who taught me how to live, what is positive, what's negative, and how to move toward the positive. And to see that in not only myself, but in other people. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful for that. I will never forget how wonderful they were. <clears throat> they made a difference for me. And so it is. And so it is. Mm. <clears throat> hey, Mark. Richard, I see you are unmuted. Would you like to honor somebody? Uh, I guess maybe to what I mentioned last week about my mom and dad, how hospitable they were to people, you know, and a uh, story about the black family that moved a block away from them. I came mm -hmm. home on leave when I was in the army and they told me what they had done and it felt very, you know. Yeah, honoring your parents yeah, for their they, work. They took, they took uh, responsibility. Mm-hmm. Apparently, the, in fact, the, the, the immediate neighbor to those people has put up a fence after they had moved in. And I said, that's ridiculous. It's a, stupid, it's a fence that actually just went to the sidewalk and and it, it didn't cover the whole, it's just a fence, just dividing. So you're so, honoring your parents? Yeah, and then, and then their whole attitude on life. I think that they were very uh, curious of people and culturally different, whatever, you know, they, and uh, mentioning about even a glass of water to a guest. And my folks were very adamant. They couldn't, somebody couldn't leave without getting something. Mm -hmm. They'd offer tea or coffee or, yeah, maybe water. They would feel kind of like uh, disappointed if, if a guest didn't take something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Richard. Brenda, I see you are unmuted. Would you like to share who you're honoring this morning? Good morning, everybody. Um, talking about who we honor makes me so tearful mm. because I, when I think back to my family and my aunts and uncles, I just, I feel so blessed that I had so much love growing up as a child in that family uh, that uh, they're always with me and it just, it's resonating with me and I feel very emotional in my gratitude. Mm for all that I have had and, and for the future of my family, my children, my grandchildren. So it just, it's very moving to me to be in this grateful state. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, honoring your family, your whole family. Suzanne and Tim, I see that you are unmuted. Would you like to honor somebody this morning? Yeah, I'd like to honor my parents, Jesse and Pia, and I'd like to honor my sisters, Jody and Wendy, and I'd like to honor the founders of Celebration Center, Noel and Rita McGinnis, and would you like to? I were, you know, I, it's funny, I was just thinking, um, and my parents, obviously, I mean, I am their child. <laughs> All these years later, I am. I have my dad's gestures. I sound like him. Um, I have many of my mother's things as well. Um, and how much do I sound like him when dad was on his way out with cancer and we were going up there every couple of weeks? I would answer the phone and people would say, Carl? I'd say, no, it's him. Oh. Well, you sound like your dad. Over and over and over this happened. And it became sort of a running joke. But I was also just now thinking about one of my Sunday school teachers, many, um, a few years ago, as Candace Beckett would put it, a few years ago. Um, and her, she was a, a black woman named Early Baker. Well, the first day I met her, I immediately said, Baker, that's funny. That's my middle name. 
really? Yeah, with my grandmother's maiden name. She looks at me and says, maybe we're related. I said, you never know. We were, you know, we were kind of like buddies at that point. Mm -hmm. Even though she was my teacher, my Sunday school teacher, it was still, and I thought, <laughs> And I was just thinking about that right now for mm. because it was because I think it was kind of kind of humorous in a way, but I love yeah. maybe we're related. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Any uh, anybody else? All right. Well, I would like to invite the choir. Um, has a, a special offering for us today.
each day a little kinder. Let me talk, let me talk each day a little kinder. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, Thank you so much, choir. That was absolutely beautiful. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I continue to be so grateful for our choir and for all of our amazing um, musicians that we have here in this community, including our music director, Lynn Hollyfield, and the way that y'all have just stuck together and, and continued to provide such excellent music for us. And this is the time and our service for our prayer requests and our giving. So first prayer request, we love to pray with you. So if you have something that you are creating in your life, something that you are uncreating in your life, I invite you to give us your prayer request in one of two ways. Uh, you can either turn in a prayer request on our on our. Uh, website. If you go to celebrationcenter.org, you'll see request affirmative prayer, or you can send those prayer requests to prayer at celebrationcenter.org. Either way, those are held in confidentiality with myself and our practitioners, and we pray on those throughout the week and with ministry of prayer. And I also invite you to give of your time, talents, and treasures, and you can do that on our homepage as well, celebrationcenter.org, and it's it says give a big green button and we do have our new breeze site up and running everything is going really smoothly and y'all are doing a superb job of donating and getting your um your accounts created so if you have any questions about that feel free to contact me and for the moment i invite you to just bring in all of your love all of your joy all of your uh talents and time your treasures everything that you offer to the center by your presence in our community and let us say our offertory affirmation together aloud while saying muted I open my heart to give and receive the blessings that our spirits promise to me. As I do, the entire universe conspires to give me an abundant life and I open to accept it. And so it is. And now Lynn has some music for us. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and by this we live. From you I receive, to you I give, together we share, and by this we live. Thank you, Lynn. And Rich, would you like to bless our, our prayers and our donations? Sure. Take another deep breath and let it out. And we 
breathe in spirit and, and breathe out gratitude as we now bless all the gifts that are donated now or coming to the center. As we know they are given from the spirit and from love. These gifts come to the center and go back out to the community and come back to us multiplied. We know that all the prayers submitted and in submission are answered as soon as they are thought and written. Everyone making a request is already blessed and divine. And these prayers and affirmations are set in motion right now. I give thanks that this is so, and so it is. And so it is. And now we have an extra special treat for y'all. Ivor Tillotson, our leadership council treasurer and technology extraordinaire is doing our announcements today. Oh. <laughs> I might know the technology, but it's, uh, we still have to go back and forth to figure it out. Um, so announcements this week, um, we have um, on two weeks, Coming up in two Saturdays is our Zentangle uh, workshop fundraiser. Uh, and this is uh, a love offering uh, class for doing a Zentangle, which I don't know too much about, but I'm really fascinated about it because Reverend Faith talks about it all the time and how much she loves it. And she shows us, um, she shows us the, the things that she does sometimes during um, when we're having our uh, morning uh, get together, which is on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. <laughs> I'm sliding in a little bit of extra extra material. <laughs> um, so this is with uh, Reverend Alan Yugas, is that correct? Yeah. And uh, he is providing this workshop to us for for free and uh, asking that he, if you attend, that you provide uh, a donation to the celebration center. And um, as what I've been told is if you know how to hold a pencil and, sh and you can pretty much come in and enjoy the, the process with everyone. Yes. Um, uh, falling in love with you is- fall, I, I, The falling in love with you class um, has been postponed until after, until, <laughs> until after we're back uh, together in person, just because there's a lot of activity going on right now and Reverend Chris would like to uh, give it her full attention when we are back together. And uh, recurring events at the bottom of the website. Um, and they are the same ones as usual. We have something going every day of the week. So please uh, check them out. And I think that's about it. Oh, Ivor and I switching roles. I was trying to share the screen. It just wasn't working very well because Ivor's our tech guru. Uh, and now, Lynn, a final song. Okay, I'm um, going to end with uh, John Lennon's Imagine. So I hope you'll join me. The words are in the chat box. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only a sky Imagine no the people living for today imagine there's no countries it isn't hard to do nothing to kill or die for no religion.
mission to imagine all the people living life in peace you, you may say that we're dreamers but we're not the only one We know someday all will join us And the world live as one Ooh. Ooh. Imagine no possessions I wonder if we can No need for greed or hunger A brotherhood of man Imagine all the people share Not the only one. I hope someday all will join us and the world will live as one. So I just send us all out to create that world that we imagine, that world that works for everyone, that world where we show up and are fear facing so as to um, be truly in the light with and for one another. And so it is. And now we say bye to Facebook.